Hi, everyone. Welcome to our second last lecture for this course. This lecture will largely be tailored to helping you with your second photography workshop. Previously, we talked about various fundamentals and technicals of photography. No doubt many of you have already been, are already aware of these basics. Some of you already have digital SLR cameras at home and thus already have mastered how to manage exposure. That is, the ISO aperture and shutter speed triangle. Uh, you may have already uh, worked with lenses in the past from wide angle to telephoto. And perhaps many of you already have a command of how to adapt and source lighting to create effective images. But many of you may not, and this lecture will be devoted to making the most out of our phones. For the most part, the cameras on your phone offer high resolution images, but they lack the level of customization and control that a regular digital camera offers. Phone lenses are limited and they make a lot of decisions regarding exposure and color for you. In essence, this lecture will be a series of tips, tricks, tips and tricks for using your phone to document and present your work without relying on filters and other post-production techniques. You can still get good shots with your phone, so this will be an attempt to help you get the most out of your phones and pick up some deeper photo principles along the way. Many of you may already know intuitively, but hang tight. I'll be working with my iPhone, but, an but Android has many of the same features and expands uh, and, and even expansions on what I'll be showing in their manual mode. Let's begin by talking about what you can do with your phone's camera. Firstly, make sure that you focus on your subject matter. Tap on the area that you want to be in focus for your image and your camera will do its best to prioritize the focus and exposure of that particular element. Furthermore, adjusting the slider to the right will allow you to adjust the exposure to something brighter or darker depending on your own preferences. The iPhone's digital camera, the iPhone's <clears throat> uh, camera grid can help you to create a balanced composition that adheres to the rule of thirds by displaying a faint grid over the capture frame. You can turn on this camera grid on iPhone easily in its settings. For those of you who don't know what the rule of thirds are, the rule of thirds is a soft guideline that often makes for more pleasing image composition. Aligning your subject matter along the lines and vertices can often create more tension, energy, and interest in the composition rather than simply centering your subject. Take this image by Jeff Wall entitled A Sudden Gust of Wind After Hokusai. The horizon is set entirely is the horizon line follows the lower third of the frame while the trees in action are well aligned in the left third of the frame. But one thing to keep in mind is that the rule of thirds can be a guide, but it's never a hard and fast rule. You can deploy any of the elements and principles that we learned in our first section of this class to your frame composition for effective results. Take this image by Stuart Clipper, which places his subject matter dead center in the frame. Lastly, explore the settings that come with your phone. Outside of filters, your phone offers plenty of options for getting the best image you can out of its interface. Those are some of the basic tips for getting the most out of your phone camera, but there's a whole mess of measures that you can take when setting up your shot. If you have access to one, use a tripod. Using a tripod or other stand allows you to compose your scene with more precision and reliability. If you don't have a tripod, you can usually construct a consistent setup using tape, books, or anything else that you have lying around. You'll be surprised by how better your photographs will be if you take the time to build a quick rig to hold your camera in place. Pay attention to lighting. As, photo as photographers, we have the ability to change where our light source is and in relation to our subject which helps us to clarify forms or emphasize certain details over others. Front lighting is the most straightforward to shoot for, creating a flat and even look. With the light directly in front, 
the shadows fall behind this, the object, so cast shadows can easily be used to describe the form. With light coming from the side, you have the ability to have part of your subject in shadow, while the other is being directly affected by the light source. This creates a sense of dimensionality as the light and shadow will articulate the shape of your subject. By positioning the light source from below, we can cast shadows on raised elements. Traditionally, subjects lit from below tend to have a very eerie or creepy tone, as we're very used to overhead light sources. By placing light sources above your subject, raised surfaces will catch light while anything recessed will be in shadow. Look at this image by Moneta Sleet Jr. The light is coming from just above the subject's eye line. you notice the highlights on her cheekbones and her shoulders. In real life, we're often seeing multiple light sources at the same time, with each affecting the image that we see based on their distance, intensity, and size. When we're planning our photos, we can light a subject from multiple angles to balance our colors, clarify the forms, or simulate a more natural lighting scenario. Remember to find ways to diffuse your light. The larger the light source, the softer the light. By that principle, the closer your light source is to your subject, the larger it is. You can use paper to cover your lamp or a white sheet to help soften that light source. You don't necessarily need access to a studio or studio equipment to get a studio feel for your images. Take this impromptu setup I created as a demonstration. This is a quick setup to demonstrate what will be uh, an asset for the next workshop. To create this image, I used a plain sheet as my background, taped to the wall and stretching below my subject. I'm using two light sources at a three quarter angle to create, uh, to ensure that my subject is well lit and well articulated. To ensure my shadows remain soft, I covered my light in thin paper as a makeshift diffuser. I've also anchored my phone to this box with tape as a way to ensure that I can take multiple images and adjust without losing my framing. My last tip for this lecture is simple. Take a lot of images, take a lot of pictures. Take many, keep adjusting, and then after the fact, assess and select your preferred image. Remember that you are capturing an ethereal moment. And so the more versions you have, the better the chance you've got, you get, you've got what you intended to get. So that wraps up my relatively short lecture for today. For our final lecture, I'll be taking you through some basic methods of cleaning up your image in Photoshop. If you have any questions before then, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be around.